On this episode of New York Eats, we're visiting food activist and founder of Brooklyn Braze, Chef Crystal Lynch. Her signature flavors blend American Southern and Cape Verdean tropical elements. Today, she's prepared salmon y papillon, a dish that's fresh, healthy, and simply mouthwatering. We met Chef Krista early in 2020 as our catering business began to take off. A lot has happened since then, so we visited Chef in her Brooklyn kitchen and talked about what she's up to these days, how she came up with her style, and how it's still growing. If you ask me about my aesthetic, I would always call it like uh, contemporary comfort food. I think I'm recently kind of like reacquainting myself with my background or I never really felt very comfortable. And you have no idea how many people are like, what's Cape Verdean? One of my parents is from the South. So I kind of grew up eating more of that kind of food, but I've reacquainted myself with it. And I am definitely immersing like uh, elements of that food into what we do now. When most people in the Western world think of Cape Verde or Cabo Verde, you think of idyllic beaches and vacations made for Instagram. Most don't know the small island's nation's history is rooted in slavery by the Portuguese going back to the late 1400s. The Cape Verde Islands experienced the longest period of European colonization of any African nation. It wasn't until 1974 that Cape Verde got their independence. Due to the Portuguese, many Cape Verdeans are a mestizo ethnicity, further widening all the shapes and forms that make up blackness in this world. We asked Chef Krista to tell us more about the food culture of Cape Verde. If you know anything about Cape Verde, they're off the coast right there. So we have a lot of, we have cattle, but also a lot of fish. So that's the dominant protein is the fish. In addition to that, we also have a lot of starch, um, rice and peas, uh, but the rice and peas has different elements. And if you were like to have like West Indian food, like olives, tomatoes, it's not um, just the rice and peas with the thyme or, or coconut milk, the way that most people in New York are familiar with it. I've been in New York for 17 years and I've only met two other Cape Verdean women. I was craving a Cape Verdean food a few months ago and I was looking for a restaurant and the one restaurant that we had in the city closed down. I was talking to somebody yesterday and they're like, how could there only be one Cape Verdean restaurant? I was like, it's not that well known. Our people for the most part are dominant in Massachusetts. Cape Verde is a group of coastal islands which may be the reason its native took up in Massachusetts where seafood cuisine thrives. Cape Verdeans celebrate a rich heritage of vibrant dance, fresh food, and a tight-knit family. We asked Chef Krista what inspired her to cook. One of my first jobs in college outside of what they call traditional work study is when I was a sophomore, I got a job at a restaurant at a neighborhood, almost like a family-owned diner situation. And that was the beginning for me for the culinary industry. And I worked for da uh, Chef Daniel Ballou. If you're into restaurants, you probably know him. He's a very well-known French chef. Um, I worked at his restaurant on 44th Street and I worked every single weekend during my time at Columbia. But then when I graduated in 2010, we were still having a lot of difficulty people being able to get jobs who were coming out of grad school. I had left working for Chef Danielle when I worked at this restaurant called Rouge Tomate. So because I was not able to get a job, I went back to restaurants because it's part of my history. I like the work. It's kind of turn and burn, uh, fast paced. Chef Krista brings her family style to the world of French cuisine. She's classically trained and homegrown. You can taste and smell the French, Portuguese, West African, and Northern Maine influence in all of her dishes. When I think of modern elevated comfort food, I think Chef Krista. She prepared a beautiful salmon y papillon and we could barely wait to try it. Okay, we're doing salmon y papillon. Uh, y papillon. So that's like a paper, a parchment paper. I have eight ounce cuts of salmon. I marinated last night in a little bit of brown sugar, smell paprika, kosher salt, as well as thyme. I also added some Dijon mustard um, as well for a little bit of a different flavor. This is minced garlic, and then I have my string, string beans. I'm adding a little bit of Herbs de Provence, which has a little bit of lavender. I'm going to do a little bit more of olive oil on top. And I'm going to tuck everything in like putting a baby to bed. The next step will be our rice and the saute of the cherry tomatoes. My oven is on 400. I'll look at it in about 10 minutes. 
The next part is I'm going to saute my cherry tomatoes. Normally, the cherry tomatoes go in with the dish, then I saute separately. I've been boiling some water. So it's two cups of water to one cup of rice. So I wanted to make sure that I had four servings. So there are four cups of water right here. This is two cups of rice. I'm gonna add it in here. The water has been boiling already. We asked Chef Krista how this dish tied in with her Cape Verdean roots. The tomatoes and the olives are very Cape Verdean. Um, that adds that spin. I use a lot of lemon, a lot of herbs. I'm adding a little bit of kosher salt on the rice right here. Mm -hmm. This is butter and lemon. This is for my tomatoes. Um, I didn't put a lid on this. I think if you buy like the instant box rice, they would say put a lid on it. Um, I just continue to watch my rice. I'm starting okay. with a wooden spoon. Mm -hmm. I'm making sure nothing sticks. I'm adding additional moisture as needed. Like right now, I see it sticking a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of butter to the bottom of it and scrape the bottom of my boots. So all we got right here is just lemon, garlic, and tomato. Not there yet. I didn't want it to, but it looks beautiful though, right? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. How much longer do you think it needs? Hold on a second, let me cut through it. Probably just five minutes. Yeah, the center's not hot. So, My favorite acid is lemons and limes. I forgot about my olives. Just a few. Just like Krista constantly adjusts flavors to brighten and deepen her culinary works of art, she had to stay versatile as a business as the world changed forever. Biggest uh, monitoring contract that we've had, it was a couple of days, uh, three days actually, uh, March, third, fourth, and fifth of 2020, and 20, no, I'm sorry, 36 hours before we were to start, uh, the world shut down in New York. We got a call from Twitter said the entire thing is canceled. I was so busy working, I had no idea what the heck, like I didn't really know what was going on. At that time, they were calling it the coronavirus. That was the language way before COVID-19 came. So I was just working and not really paying attention to the daily news and we weren't getting any work any catering work because all of new york was scared i mean at one point during the spring you know central park was like a freaking graveyard and at the time we were displaced from our kitchen so i started to uh, brainstorm about like how can we get back to the local community without having a kitchen so i developed a business model that involved getting restaurants involved and I connected to some wonderful people at Gage & Toner, which is a historic restaurant here in Brooklyn. Their PR person connected me with another restaurant called Ate Calvin. So I used my um, board membership at Canva, which is a social service agency that's been around since the late 70s, to leverage a partnership with a local shelter. The first shelter that we worked with was Kensington Shelter. We immediately started a program where the restaurants were preparing meals for a certain number of days. The restaurants would do all the food preparation, but Brooklyn Braves would pay the fee for the food to be delivered and basically cover all of the operations around it, including delivery. Our first cycle was eight weeks. This project actually cost $29,000 for eight weeks. Um, through our fundraising platform, we raised $7,000. So the business put in the remainder to make sure that we covered the first eight weeks. For everyone that stayed with us till now, this is for you. Sammy Papillon by Chef Krista Lynch from Brooklyn Breeze. Help us keep making this content by smashing the like button and subscribing to Main Point Media.